Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, family of y'all. All righty, I'm getting tens in the room already. That's quick, Brother Junior. <laughs> I don't know if that ten was up. All right. Getting tens already at every, like everybody knows. Knows the format. Well, praise y'all, saints. Thank you so much that we're coming in well. I don't know, blog, uh, blog, clogged radio, wherever you want to call it. And though we're thankful for the vehicle to use, I don't know why they've changed formats like they have. I wish they would continue with Skype instead of trying to use this hi fi system, but. I'm I'm still going lo-fi tonight until I can learn more about the hi-fi setup that they have. It seems to be a little bit buggy. But I'm grateful again to be with you here this evening on uh, on the Shabbat Blog Talk Radio. Hallelujah. Pray all as well. Pray all uh, that was able to uh, be in service with us today were uh, edified. We're enlightened, we're helped in some manner, some way, by the Spirit of Yah, hopefully to be used as a servant of Yah, as we all are, as we, we're living in a world, saints of the Most High Yah, where a lot of folk are yielding themselves to evil spirits. I mean, majority of the populace is. As I pray to the Most High Yah, you know, I know the correlation because of all these evil doers and my former state and a lot of our former states, we used to be host, grand host to a bunch of uh, wicked demonic spirits. But now we have the ability to be filled with all the holy spirits of Yah, the righteous spirits of Yah, and I think I like that better. You know, once I've tasted life and got addicted to life, you know that life is Yeshua. I, I think I won't. I don't want to go back to the weak and beggarly elements. Do any of you want to go back to the weak and beggarly elements? Is that part of your testimony? I've seen many go back, and it's sad to watch a mind go reprobate. As the spirit of Yah, you know, quickened today, that we, the people of Yah, need to know of a truth that Christ is in us as we don't know that he, he gave that warning of reprobate you know that's 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 a that's an eye opener you know that's a conscience sucker that's a defibrillator for the mind I'm grateful to have a true family I thank most high y'all for each and every one of my brothers and sisters I do I pray for all those that the Spirit put in my mind, you know, that is needful of the prayer at the time. You know, we the saints of the Most High Yah, we need, definitely we need, uh, we need to pray for one another. A lot of healing that goes on, especially we may be, you know, in different states and different continents or whatever. Still, you know, by uh, the vehicle of prayer, we're still knit together. And we can still, you know, express love one to another even though we're uh, separated by miles, so to say. But the essence of our walk, when you boil it all down, when you get to the nitty-gritty, when you get to the purpose of it all, all we can say is one, and that's Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. You know, we have the whole report set before us. And that whole report tells us of the greater one living within us. That's why, you know, I said, you know, talking about the book of Hebrews, even though it's named Hebrews, it talks about the core essence of being a Hebrew, which is Yeshua, Hamashiach. And again, let us continue on tonight, this evening, wherever time it may be in your area. As we uh, go through the book of Hebrews, I don't know, how, I'm trying to remember how far we got last time. It was just a few verses, but I'm going to go ahead and pick up with verse 3. Praise Yah. 
As we learned about the Son being the one that speaks to us in these last days, the same manner that the, the Most High Yah used the prophets to speak to his people, he's still speaking to us. He's not left uh, the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. In this matter, he's made sure that we are uh, constantly in contact if we allow it. We're constantly in fellowship if we are allow it. We are in communication with him if we allow it. So praise Yah, saints of the Most High Yah. I'm very thankful that the Most High Yah is able to, uh, by his power, to get me beyond myself. And he does. He helps us get beyond ourselves, to get beyond ourselves so that we can serve him. Very thankful for that. Very thankful. And I know a lot of us are very thankful for that. Even though we're living life in this flesh, we can live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for us. Loved us. Loved us. That, that very vehicle of love, I mean, it was not an emotion. It was an expression. It was an, a work. It was a manifestation. I mean, if anything embodied itself, in that body way was, you know, the full manifestation almost of love. And here we are. And here we are. Verse 3 says, Who being, we're still talking about Yeshua here in Hebrews 1 and 3. And again, thank you, Brother uh, Paul, Brother Ugly, again, for uh, there to post scriptures. Post the word, post, you know, whatever is needed. Very thankful for your labor. It's, it's, it's very welcomed. And I bless you, brother. Thank you. Hebrews 1 and 3, Who being the brightness, the brightness of His glory. So we're seeing that Yeshua here was the one that, it, that, that expressed the full eminence, the full shininess, the full embodiment. If I can say brightness, you know, in natural terms, when we see brightness, or we, you know, try to perceive brightness, we think, of, you know, maybe our headlights in our eyes, or maybe a, uh, a heavy halogen beam, or, or the sun, or something like this, you know, in natural terms. Well, we're talking here about, you know, realm of the Spirit that Yeshua emanated, you know, by his person, how he expressed the glory of Yah through his brightness. And it's amazing when Yah said, let there be light. And we know... We learned last time that he created all things by Jesus Christ. Let there be light, and there was light. This was even before there was a literal sun created. There was truth. There was righteousness. There was Yeshua there, if I can say. So we see how the invisible Yah would manifest himself to us, how he would speak to us. He would speak to us. I mean, what a way to reach a people. What a way to uh, bring forth a testimony. To, to come to your own. Come to your own. And we all, you know, suffering with him, we have come to our own. And we have seen how our own receives us not. Even Paul had to go, you know, this way. He had to walk this walk. He had, he had to uh, endure this great flight of affliction. He had to go through this fire. You know, he had a zeal that his own countrymen, his own people would be saved. You know, he said at one time that he he wished he was accursed. You know, that that is a love. He must have learned this from Yeshua. He, he must have had a pattern. He must have had someone on the inside. But we see also that he also found himself in error doing this because he found, just as Yeshua did, and he came to his own and his own received him not. 
And, you know, it took this, you know, this kind of tribulation, this kind of uh, witness to him. You know, he was coming to him in love. They didn't receive the love of the truth. You know, he come to a point to finally, you know, the brightness of the glory of Yeshua come to him. You know, the revelation of Yeshua come to him and they say, hey, you're not worthy. I mean, I come to you. I, I mean, shh. I had within myself to be accursed, and you, you know, you make it in. But he said, uh, you, you see, and you deem yourself not worthy. I'm, I'm turned in, I'm turned into the one scattered among the nations. And so he did. And then when he done that, he found himself in in the form that he was created to do. The Most High God had formed him for that purpose. And we see here Yeshua. We see in, you know, in the book of Hebrews an express image, you know, I mean, even our English words, even though English, you know, it's a language that I'm speaking to you and a lot of us are, you know, we're receiving communication on this very, you know, language, the strain of language that we're using. You know, I think the Most High uh, is going to restore to us a language that I believe will express the fullness of what's in us. You know, even my language has barriers. Even the thing with language has barriers. But I thank the Yah for praise, worship, you know, and, and, and adoration. That, you know, whatever my words can't speak, you know, they, they, at least I can animate this body in thankfulness. I can lift up my hands. I can shout. I, you know, I can give glory and praise, honor to Him with my mouth, with my body. And it, you know, and it brings a communication out of my spirit that speaks the words that should be said. The intercession that should be going on through the Spirit. And I thank the Most High God for that. That I can wake up every day, open my eyes, and the first thing I want to do is say thank you. Thank you, Most High. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name. You know, that I have, I have purposed myself to do that. And if I don't, I repent. You know, I find myself... I catch myself right away, and I correct that thing. I, you know, like I said, you know, I point to I point to myself and say, "Get your ass up! You give thanks to the Father. You give thanks to the Son. You get you get your butt up, and you be thankful." And you know, it's the Spirit of Yah. I think. Because my flesh, you tell, tell you the truth, my flesh wants to sit there and grow roots in that bed. My flesh wants to shut the eyes. I don't know something about this, this flesh, especially when, you know, I, I, I have the ability to get up and, and serve, you know, a job out there for my family to bring in income. You know, it's, it's amazing, this flesh... Just a little bit of time before it knows it has to get up. It gets the most comfortable. It, it wants to get, you know, the, the, that more deep sleep in. Now all of a sudden it gets more tired than it ever has been through the whole night. Just, you know, about 15 minutes before you got to get up and you're like, whoa, look at this booger. Look what it's communicating. It, won't, it wants to strap me to this bed. Come on, just a little, go slap that snooze button. You can five minutes more sleep, five minutes more sleep. No, I have to take charge. The spirit of Yah has to take charge in me. And before that flesh can say anything more, I'm already cutting it off. Thank you. Thank you, Most High. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you again for having a, a pillow, you know, for my head. And, and Most High, you sheltered me last, through, through the night, and, and, you know, and I didn't come to no harm. And, 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 if, and if I was got shielded, you, you provided a cover. I mean, I had a place to rest to lay my head. I thank you, Most High, you But it's amazing, you know, this war that we deal with, you know, on all levels. 
and none of it should be taken lightly. You know, even just that little thing. I know a lot of us, <laughs> a lot of us, you know, have uh, have dealt with that. This flesh getting rest, getting sleepy, getting tired. You know, this body gets tired. You know, I, right after I got me done ministering today, I was like, whoo. You know, it, it does take a lot out of you, you know, when you're ministering in the spirit of Yah because you want to be passionate. You want, your desire is to dispense something to the people that they can use, you know, and, and you, you pull up love. You pull everything from the spirit of Yah, praying that the, the, the Most High Yah will use you to be a mouthpiece to speak of his spirit. Then when it's all said and done, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh, I got to do blog talk. And my flesh, yeah, yeah, you need to go sleep. You need to get some rest, boy. You tired? And I said, no. No. No, I've been resting all day. You know, just, you know, the fact that I'm able to get up and a minister on the Sabbath has a rest of its own. And I thank the Most High Yah, but Yeshua, who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of his person. Saying, you know, that everything that we have an account of what Yeshua did, this was the nature of Elohim. This was the invasion, this was the image of the invisible Yah. And everything that was the Father, he told Thomas, you have seen in me. You, suffice you, show us the Father? Yet I have been with you all this time, and yet, natural Thomas, you have not seen the Father. But I think the Most High God that he did walk with them that time, and then opened he their understanding. I bet when he, their, their understanding was open, I bet it was more than a two-ton uh, set of bricks. It would be to me, you know, to, to, to come to that... That, that knowledge and that wisdom that all of a sudden you, you know your Savior right before you was written before time and, and here he is before you standing in flesh. Everything that you learned about him from all the scriptures and everything is standing right before you can view him with your own eyes. I mean, you just think being a disciple there, even after being assembled for fear of the, the them Jews or the, whoever it was, the Hudites. But this image that we're trying to obtain to. Like I said today, you know, that's one thing I, I perceive, you know, as I've been in this walk all these many years that the, that the Most High has allowed me to, to walk in this walk. And, you know, and as I go on in the years and as, you know, I gain wisdom and knowledge and understanding of Yeshua, I understand the passion. Especially in me, that is, you know, that banks itself up. It, it is, in many ways, when when the word of the Most High Yah in a chosen vessel, it, it pours in, it pours in, it pours in. Then the vessel has to some somehow release itself to get. I, it's it's almost indescribable. I'm, I'm sitting here trying to describe something going on in the spirit with English words and, and you know my vocabulary being old Southern bumpkin. You know I have this you know learn this lazy slang of a language. You know I really uh, cannot really explain. You know what is going on spiritually. This exchange of this communion and fellowship with the Most High Yah as being, you know, a servant of the Most High Yah in this manner, in this administration. You know, never in my life, you know, 25 years ago, I, I, I'm going to be in front of people being a teacher. I, that never crossed my mind. 
And now here I am. And I'm embracing it more and more and more as I see, you know, that that the image of Christ really, really, really needs to be expressed. And I think the Most High Yah is really wanting His people to rise up. Wanting His people to make themselves known. Because everything else is making it. I mean, if we can judge, just, just judge the time and the season and everything going on, you can see the push. Especially, you know, with this homosexual movement and all these other pushes. I mean, in the spirit, something is really, really going on. I mean, as time shortens, and as his days grow shorter, you can see the step up that is going on. You can actually see, we the people of Most High, y'all can only see this. You know, the world, they just look at it, ah, okay, sarai, sarai, whatever will be, will be. You know, they, they, they go sing their, their damn Gomer Pyle songs or what the hell it is, I don't know. But, you know, they, they got their songs for it, I guess, it somehow brings solace to them, and they got their, never mind about that, but we know, we know, I'd rather drown myself in the spirit of Yah than drown myself in, in, in Jack Daniels or Wild Turkey or something like that. You know, the drunkenness of the Holy Spirit, man, that, 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 that thing is awesome. Ain't nothing can touch, you know, being drunk in the spirit. And I mean, it's, it's not like this damn natural drunk, you know, where you're stumbling and falling, you ain't got no judgment. But it is, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen it, especially in me, bring me to a point of high praise and high worship and high thankfulness. I have, and you know, I love drinking of that, you know, more, I, hey, I got to fill my cup up, fill my cup up some more, you know, give me a, don't give me a six pack, give me a 24 or 36 pack of that stuff, yeah, I really, really love that stuff, because I know, I know this of receiving life and dispensing life, and, you know, you receive of the Father, then you give back to the Father, and then He gives back to you, and you give back to Him, and he says, you know, you get to a point where sometimes you can't contain it because he said he's going he's gonna to make it to a point where you can't contain it. So we learn in the image of Yah in so many facets, in so many ways. I mean, just just uh, being able to, you know, you know, hook in with the Most High's joy. That one is that that one is phenomenal. That one, you know, when you do the will of Yah and you please Him and you do according, you know, to what truth has dictated. There's always some come back to you that witness that the Most High Yah is pleased with you. And then when you receive that witness, but boy, isn't that a supercharging? And does, doesn't that just uh, fill your your being with just excitement and, and your heart's indicted in a good manner? And again, my English language. It's limited, and, and I cannot contain it, so, you know, I got to bottle it up, and hopefully, you know, another praise and worship session, I can release it, and then give him thanks and magnify and glorify him, and knowing that, hey, he's going to return it again, I'm going, boy, what an exchange, what a fellowship, boy, oh, I mean, woo, hallelujah, that's all I can say. But Yeshua, I've got to get going on with verse 3 here. <laughs> Who being the brightness of his glory, I'm getting excited, you know, because it's talking about Yeshua. The book of Hebrews, I, you know, you, you know, a carnal man will look at that and say, oh, the book of Hebrews, he turns in the Bible, I'm going to learn about Hebrews. And then he starts reading and reading and reading, and he goes, uh... I don't see nothing about it so far. All I see is uh, an account of this person called Jesus. Hmm. But here we are, starting on the book of Hebrews, and we're learning about a Hebrew who was being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things 
by the word, 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 by the word. And that one, you know, that, that, that one, I, you know, I said the word meditate. And, you know, and <laughs> whew, upholding all things by the word of his power. I mean, it's amazing. The Most High at any time could say stop. Just one word, stop. <laughs> and this, you know, and, and this existence would just not exist no more. You know, if, you know, again, my English language is limited. <laughs> Oh, bless you, Brother Paul. We go ahead and say the more tangents, huh? Well, I like, you know, breaking bread. Because bread uh, has so many uh, good ingredients in you, especially that bread from on high, that manna. I'm, I know what it is. I'm not, I'm not going to say, what is this? You know, that's what manna means. But here we are, you know, we're looking at the manna from heaven. We're learning about that manna from heaven and... You know, here it is, you know, coming down from heaven, and we, we've we beheld him as the only begotten of the Father, so we can't be our like our forefathers and say, what is this? No, we know what it is. He is that bread from heaven, who is the brightness of his glory, the express, the express, I mean, like carbon copy. You know, if you could, could twin, and like he was saying, if you could twin... Yah, in the physical, as Yeshua was, you know, expressed in the physical, then you would say, hey, that's the reason why he told Thomas, you know, hey, you see me? You seen the Father? And, you know, and I bet Thomas, you know, carnal, kind of natural mind there was, you know, probably looking him up and down in bodily form and going, you know, probably missing it a little bit. Until, you know, Most High Yah quickened that to him. And then you, you understand the words that fell out of his mouth, that come out of his, uh, my Savior, my Elohim, my Yah. You know, he finally understood. He wanted, hey, if I can only put my finger, you know, he was. In... <laughs> but here we are, saints of the Most High, Yah. Uh, by, you know, me reading the words to you, we believe On the Savior we have not seen, but but we have seen. We've not seen him with our physical eyes, but we're starting to see him. Hey, I mean he's, I mean he's doing a unique thing by helping us use our spiritual eyes and seeing him, especially in the Book of Hebrews, trying to keen our spiritual eyes because you know. He did say blindness in part has happened to Israel. And you know, I think in, 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 in many ways, he's using, you know, getting us away from natural sight and desiring us to look on things internal, which is the true image. And here he is expressing. We, we got an account. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, gives an account of this express image, the brightness of the glory, putting on the earth suit, putting on this robe of flesh. But he said, this, 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 this Yeshua, this Savior, upheld all, notice that word, all things by the word of his power. When, 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 as we know that Hasatan, he was working on conquering, divide, conquer. He was working on division hard, real hard at that time. He became the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. He upheld, upheld all things by the word of his power when, notice that word, when he had by himself Purged, 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 purged. It's almost like, you know, purging. I think of purging, you know, I can look 
naturally at something, especially like laundry or something. You know, you've been working in a mud hole all day and you've been digging down in clay and digging, digging down in dark dirt, found some few old pockets in it's all over, you know, a white shirt of yours, and you desire to wear that white shirt again, what do you do? You get everything needed to make that shirt back white to its normal state. So you got to purge out all them stains if you desire to have that garment in the state that it was before you, before, when you put it on before you defiled it with, you know, the labors of your hand. And, you know, and it takes a lot of soap, you know, and the word talks about fuller soap, you know, washing fuller soap, and it takes, you know, getting that garment down and putting it in in, in, in that that scrub board and then that, that round tub, that washer, and, and rubbing and rubbing and pushing and pushing and pushing, pushing that water and pushing that soap through the fibers of that shirt to, to purge it of the oil, purge it of the clay, and purge it of the dirt. So that that, that 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 shirt can be white again, though it will be desirable to be worn again. And that's what Yeshua did. I, I said something about his blood when you know he was receiving stripes, and every stripe that he received on his back, it was a healing. It was a healing. It was a healing. It was a healing because, you know, as that flesh opened, as that flesh opened, as that, that whip, whatever it was that was striking his back and cutting that flesh open, there was blood released. There was blood released. There was blood released. And then on so unique, I mean, sin had got to that point. Iniquity had got to that point. Transgression had got to that point that he would take a sinless body and use it to be a, a substitute of the penalty that, 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 that a sinner should receive? You, you figure yourself being tied up and your back being laid open every, every swing and, and, then, and then you hear the slice and the crack of the, the, the leather and the whip and everything as it's sliced. And you could actually see, you know, blood just flowing and strowing everywhere. A sinless body. You know, a Savior would love to that point. When he by himself purged purged, purged our sins. And we, you know, this this society, this America, its teaching, its educational system, I mean, it's, it's taught people to be so damn weak. So damn weak. So damn sissy. You know, that it, 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 you know, at any time I see it, you know, even at my workplace. Oh, oh, the tip of my fingers hurt, and I've got to go get something to stop the pain. And it is sad. Oh, I've got a, a small head. I got, I got to get rid of it. Oh, my nose is running. I got to stop it. Oh, it's this, and oh, it's that, and I got to go to the doctor here and doctor there. You know, because my toenail got clipped. We are such a, the, the damn weak people. And you know, me as a son of Yah, I don't want to have none of that infirmity in me. The word said, if we're going to reign with him, we're going to have to suffer. And, and a lot of us, you know, we... You know, to get to where we are in the station is walk, we have endured a lot of pain. You know, I didn't go in detail today, you know, you know, even myself dealing with family, dealing with wives and children and everything and separation 
of, you know, brothers and sisters and, and, and dealing with pain of backbitings and slanders. I mean, we, you know, the people, of, we have to endure this pain. We got to understand this pain does pass. But are we going to view this pain as something that is helpful? Are we going to are we going to continue to allow ourselves to be purged? Are we going to continue to allow the fire of Yah consume our works? So that you know, if any works of our hands we see it all of a sudden burn with fire, we look at it. We don't get like Cain did and get dismayed and start looking at somebody, well, mine got burnt, but yours didn't. And then have the jealousy and envy and despite. And next thing you know, the spirit of murder and hatred starts a dwelling and coming in. And then the offering of Cain is really, really, really made known. Yeah, he slew his brother. What an offering, huh? So the Most High Yah didn't receive his offering. So sin was at the door. So he went ahead and, and gave an offering to the God of this world by slaying his brother. Because the Hasatan had respect unto that, didn't he? The king know this. But did Cain know this? I mean, you know, these allegories and uh, the things that went on before us, we really, really got to look at them. You know, even though we're reading the book of Genesis, it's still relevant for today. Yeshua says, I am the first and I am the last. So from... Uh, I'm looking from Genesis to Revelation. Still everything has got to be pretty much pertinent for this hour. I mean, the ends of the world are, you know, hinging on us. They without us are not going to be made perfect. But he by himself had purged our sins. Our. Notice that. Our it was a certain set of people he had in mind. He did come to his own, and his own offered him up upon a tree. They, they, they think, you know, they were doing the most high of service. You know, them scribes, them Pharisees, them hypocrites, you know. Truth was there right before them. And he was there, to, you know, to... Bring them liberty to bring you no know, septic captives free. The law was sitting right there before them in flesh, and they didn't receive him. And you see how the Most High I had to deal with them. You of our, you are of your father, the devil. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He'd done all this. When? Purged our sins. What a work of love. And the more, you know, as I mature in this walk, I understand again why I am, I, I, I am getting more passionate. My passion towards this life, this, you know, this worldly life and everything that entails it, it, I see it dimming. I see it going to the background more and more day by day because, you know, I, I desire this. Because we, the people of Yah, know the days are closing. Our time's getting short. And, you know, the message has come out of her, my people. And a lot of people can't, can't hear that message. They think, ah, oh, yeah, so-and-so said it, and you're just mocking him. You're just copying him. Not hearing the, what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Get on damn Facebook and, and uh, foam out all your shame. 
A lot of people in this ministry tried to reach out to you. The voice of the Son tried to reach out to you, give you direction, give you wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and you slapped the hand of Yah backwards. Well, I didn't slap that Yah hand backwards, but what about his, what about his children that were coming? What about your brother and your sister that was coming to you in the spirit of love, sent by Yah, by, sent by the Spirit, being... being motivated by the Spirit to come help pull you out of the fire and you reject it. But our oh, Yeshua, He sat down on the right hand of the Majesty on high. He sat down in power. Why? He purged our sins. I mean, to be the creator of all things and to come down and humble yourselves and humble, like he humbled himself and it behooved him to be made like his brethren. Beautiful. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. Now I'm starting to understand why he'd be called wonderful. Verse 4 said, being made so much better than the angel. We're talking about the son. As he by inheritance, notice that, inheritance. You see the build up. Build up here. He has been appointed heir of all things. Same one who made all the worlds, the one that was the brightness of the Father, of his glory, express the image of his person, saying Yeshua that upheld all things by the word of the boy of the cause. He was the word. The word was made flesh. In the beginning was the word. He did a work of purging our sins. And then it set down in power being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance, that word inheritance. Just, you know, a meditation on inheritance alone, uh, uh, just a study on inheritance alone is it, 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 beautiful, it, it is magnificent, it is glorious, it is wonderful. By inheritance, Obtained a more excellent name than they. And I think the people of Yah are, are, are starting and will know the name of the Savior, but a lot of folks have got it wrong. And if they can't experience Yeshua, in casting out devils, raising the dead, healing the sick, cleansing the lepers. You know, this, this embodiment of love, this spirit of love. They can't allow this to work through their being. They, they can't allow themselves to be partakers of this authority. And this is an inheritance even now we, the people of Yah, are able to tap into. Because it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. And it's up to us. Have we believed the report? Have we believed the report? I want to see my Savior. I have a desire to see my Savior. And that desire helps me keep my hand on that plow and look forward. <coughs> I learn more and more day by day what He has done. The expression of his love just grows richer and richer and deeper and deeper and greater and greater day by day. And it should with each and every one of us. As the days get closer at our coming home, our love should be added to exponentially. I mean, we should be filling the cup up continually. With the Most High, Yah, through His Son, Yeshua. 
But it says, when he had self purged our sin, set down the right hand, the majesty on high, being made so much better than the messengers, the angels, as he by hath by inheritance, by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they. This word inheritance. My mind is going, uh, let's see, let me see where, Acts. Acts 26, I think verse 18, let's see what that says. Acts 26, 18. Talking about Paul preaching to King Agrippa. Let's start at verse 14. Paul talking here. It says, And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Paul said, Who art thou? Master? And it says, Lord, and King James. And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. For a purpose. For a purpose. What? To make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Said delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, from the nations, unto whom now I send thee. Why? Why? Why this purpose? To open their eyes to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto Yah, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance. Whoa! Forgiveness of sins that they may, notice that pivotal word, may, if they receive the word, they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Praise Yah. Praise Yah for that. Let's go again to Romans. Come to the word inheritance. Because that word heir, join heirs, heirs, and heirs of the promise, that is the root word of inheritance. And, you know, we get the word heritage from the same word, too. We, I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Romans 8, where did I say? Romans 8, let me see. Romans 8... Talking about the inheritance, talking about the fullness of his glory. I mean, we got a lot of things going here. And I start at verse 13 of Romans 8. It says, For if he live after the flesh, after, after, after. You know, the flesh has got to be before if you come after. If you live after the flesh, means everything that you do is for the flesh. And you, you clamber for the flesh and do everything for the flesh and you desire things of the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of Yah, they are the sons of Yah. It says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again, to fear. But, it says you have received this. 
the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You notice that inheritance, notice that heritage, notice that heirs. And it says in verse 16 of Romans 8, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yah. And we've got to have that confession. We got to, like I said today, we've got to know of a truth that Christ is in us. Unless ye be reprobate. If he that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, you know, we can say it with our words, but do we actually believe it? Are we actually going to confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh and we don't do according to his law, don't do according to his ways, don't manifest love in the way that he, and everything that he did, it, it don't manifest through our being, don't manifest through our body. Are we actually saying that Christ has not come in the flesh when we deny him in our own bodies? Yeah, that's that reprobate mind. That's that reprobateness. But the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of of Yah in verse 17 and it says because the spirit does this the witness bearing witness with our spirit it's going to tell us and we you know who this spirit is from it's from the son who is speaking at us in these latter days because it's going to bear witness with our spirit it's going to tell us that we are the children of Yah and then it says and if children then heirs heirs of Yah whoa There's a lot going on here, saints. There's a lot going on here, brothers and sisters. And if children, the only way we become children if we really, really understand that we have a heavenly Father. Then heirs, heirs of Yah, joint heirs with Christ, joint. So everything that he's receiving from the Father, we receive it as well. That's joint, that, you know, that, that, that's the covenant, that, that, that's the relationship, that's that communion, that's that fellowship. Join heirs with Christ if. Notice that there's a pivotal word again. If, 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 if. So be that we suffer with him. I, mean, I, I thought he's already suffered. Yes, he has. And he's still going to suffer. And we're still going to suffer with him just how long he suffered with us. Even though, you know, he's hung on a tree, impaled, the suffering is still going on. But we don't look at suffering like the world looks at suffering. Like I said, we're not down on the ground going, Whoa, it's me, poor, poor, pitiful me. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen, you know. Bless you better day in my shoes, you know, all that damn crap. Suffering is a glorious thing in this walk. How are we going to put on Christ if we don't suffer? Suffering is not a grievous thing. Suffering is a learning tool. Suffering is a strengthening tool. Suffering is a tool of fellowship. If we desire to be like Him... We've got to suffer. You know, you know, there's a lot of lust, a lot of appetites, a, a lot of things ingrained in our flesh. And it, and, and, it, and it takes a lot of suffering to get these things out of us. I've been through a lot of deliverances where a lot of these spirits do not want to leave their house. And, and you know, the host, you know, that, you know, gave it gave himself over to sin and allowed the spirit to come in, they got to suffer. That booger coming out. You know, even myself have suffered even in that manner when that spirit come out, you know. Had to deal with, you know, the emptiness of the head, the headache, hurting here, hurting there, the listlessness, you know, just the cloudy eyes, just a whole bunch of stuff. 
But even though, you know, while that was going on, I was still rejoicing the Most High Yah that, hey, I have purged this from my body by your power. I have purged this from my being by your power, Yeshua. You know, and then, then going through all this is a, is a great testimony that, hey, I'm not going there again. Oh, I don't want to feel this no more. Use pain as a stepping tool. Yeah, I mean, though we don't like pain, you know, I'm not going to go rush and get bare or excedrin, you know, to, you know, all of a sudden after deliverance, I need a bear, I need a tile, no, I need, I need some uh, morphine or some crap like that, no. I'm just going to let the, you know, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to meditate on the pain. And let it be a teaching tool and let, it, and let the suffering do its work. And it says, and if children, then heirs. Join heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with Him. And because it says, if we suffer with Him, then it says that we may be also glorified together. Notice that joint relationship. Notice that joint heritage. That, that that Yeshua went through that his he his, the joy that he had in him he desired for for him to share that joy with us. It's an amazing thing, you know, when we are converted, you know, the spirit in us it it, it, it desires for us to go strengthen our brother. You know, that is something that we that, that we have not within our own self concocted. It's the Spirit of God. He's already sealed it in His testimony. And because His Spirit bearing witness with our spirit, it, 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 it imbues us. It, it, it forms our volition to, you know, to have others join in us with our joy. Especially, you know, when we're Helping someone receive, you know, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of people are saying, why are you sitting there, you know, y'all y'all all jumping up and down and saying hallelujah and clapping your hands? You know, we're there encouraging the one seeking the Holy Spirit, you know, trying to get, you know, the whole area in the Spirit of Yah. Trying to get, you know, into a magnification mode together. You know, we're helping the magnification of the Spirit of Yah so that the person can break through, release himself, humble himself to receive of the water of the Spirit. And it's a beautiful thing when you see, when you see that the person has submitted all and surrendered all and the Holy Spirit takes over their whole being and then the tongue start speaking and magnifying the Most High Eye. You talking about, you know, you thought the area was supercharged before the person received the Holy Spirit. You'd be there when the person, after the person has received the Holy Spirit. You talking about a, a grand, that's like a somebody had put a, a supercharger, a turbo in the room. And everybody is all, all of a sudden siphoning off the same spirit and everybody's at the same height of exhilaration and everybody's at the same height of worship and at the same height of thankfulness. I mean, the whole room is filled with the spirit of Yah and it is a beautiful thing. And it is addictive. <laughs> it is addictive. You know, the flesh... You know, sometimes they don't want to, you know, coach somebody to receive and, you know, that's basically what we're, we're sitting there. We're just kind of like cheerleaders helping someone. And, you know, the Spirit of Yah does the same with us, always impelling us. You know, it's still small voice telling us, do this, do that. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. But here we are, our helpers one to another. You know, as we receive the power of Yah, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and we understand more and more, you know, 
the people that don't have the Holy Spirit why they need the Holy Spirit. And, and it, 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 it implores us and, and infatuates us, you know, to lead them through, to help them break down that wall sometimes that they've got to break through to receive the Holy Spirit. But that is a good thing. But we're still talking about uh, joint heirs. And where was I going? Uh, we finished up. We went to Acts, I think. Went to Romans. Now let us go to, let's see, Ephesians. Go to Ephesians. Come on, this poor Bible, huh? It's barely holding together. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1. I think it is. Ephesians chapter 1, starting at verse, let's see here, let's start at verse 9, I think we went over this last time, it's good to go over it again, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that's what he's, we continually hear him speaking that to us that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might to get, gather together in one all things that are in Christ, all things in Christ, because we got to continually stay in Christ so that we can be gathered, which are both, which both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, and it says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Being predestined, this thing was already foreordained. This thing was already written. Why fight against it? Why fight against things that are pre-structured and preformed. Just go ahead and submit yourselves to them. But I don't know. I, I fear this and I fear that. Will will ya will will, will ya uh, 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 quench my thirst? Will, will y'all be able to uh, uh, provide for my? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We do know. We receive the word that not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. We see the people that come out of Egypt. The Most High delivered out of Egypt. They didn't want to suffer. Yeah, the Most High uh, might have had them to uh, partake of thirst. Well, what if the people didn't moan and complain? and gripe. I think he would have provided for them abundantly. And they would not have to receive a recompense of error. Even while they were hungered, the Most High Yah was there. He knew that his people were hungry. But the people murmured and complained, Yeah! They bring us out here to kill us? With hunger? Well, well, what if the people had patiently thought within themselves like we should be, knowing being on the other side of this, knowing that the Most High Alpha would provide nourishment for them in due time? And if they'd been thankful, oh, Most High Alpha, thank you for getting us this far, you know, Most High Alpha, you, you know uh, our needs in you know, if they would have humbly, you know, asked for food, I think, then you would probably provide it for them more bountifully than a bunch of quails. But he did provide for them, but there was, you know, there was a recompense of their era. Yeah, the people were stuffing their faces. I mean, they were gorging themselves on I don't want get get all this you know eat down I don't get my belly full now I don't know when the next time I'm gonna eat so they were slain slain right on the spot but 
talking about Yeshua, in whom, in whom, in whom, in Christ, in whom, be in Christ. Lest at any time we've got to go and wander outside the body so that we can have our little sin. We've got to stay in Christ. In whom we also have an obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose. What do you mean? That's a part of that joint heirs? I mean, this was purpose? This was written? Yes. 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 Be thankful you're being upheld by the Word. Or being upheld by the Word of His power. We're thankful. I am thankful for His Word keeping my mind together. Because I remember in a former state, me as a heavy metal musician, banging my head, partying day and partying night, doing this and doing that. I was going nuts. I was going crazy. I was losing my mind in a different manner. But now, on the other side of the impalement here, beyond the resurrection, by the Beyond the ascension of Christ, I'm glad. I'm glad that I've lost my mind the right way. I am glad that I've lost my life. Why? Because I rejoice that I have found life. And this is the reason why I speak. This is the passion that is in me. This is the passion that is in Pastor. This is the passion that is in each and every one of us if we allow it to express itself. If we allow Christ to speak to us. Christ to manifest himself to us. He wants to. There's too much of us. When the veil has been rent and we have not believed that the veil has been rent. Flesh has been nailed to a tree. That body of sin has been taken out of the way. Nailed to a tree. According to the purpose of Him. This was a purpose. Don't you think it's something to be in the purpose of Yah? To be in the plan of Yah? There's, a, uh, there's billions out there that don't even enter the mind of Yah. Them billions was not entered into the mind of Yah at the foundation of the world. But you that have ears to hear and eyes to see, you've been on the mind of Yah. You received of the gift. You received the washing of water by the word. You receive the blood atoning power. You receive the atonement. You receive the sacrifice. According to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel. Didn't Isaiah said he would be called counselor? in these last days spoken to us by his son. And he shall be called. And he shall be called. And he shall be called. All things after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory. That we. What? We. 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 we should be to the praise. We should be to the praise. You mean we're part of the praise? Yeah, we, we're part of the body of praise. Yes. Are we not the body of Christ? Yes. Then he said he's going to come in the midst of the people and glorify? Yes. And he said he's going to come in the midst of me 
and help me glorify and magnify the Most High God? Yes. That we should be to the, we should be, should be, should be, should be, should be, should be, to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. Do we trust in Christ? Do we trust our brother? Do we trust our sister? Do our, does our trust have its roots in the Most High Yah first? If it don't, then we're liars. How can we say we love Yah and hate our brother? The truth is not in us. And who is the truth, the way, and the life? Who would say this? A reprobate mind. It says, in whom, <laughs> in, 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 who does that word in? In whom ye also trusted after, after that ye heard the word of truth. The gospel of your son, you heard the word of truth. Now all of a sudden, trust came, trust came, trust came. And trust had to come for, you know, to lay your life down and to say, Most High, I have sinned against you. I have infuriated a holy Elohim. And now it has come to my being that you send your son to die, and he died for me. I received the blood. I received the forgiveness of sin. I, most I, I have failed you. And now I'm awakened. Your law has awakened my conscience, awakened my being. Now, I have failed a living Elohim. And now you desire to bring me to you, to wake me up, to put life in me. I receive the breath of life now. We trusted. We trusted after we heard the word. And the word pricked our hearts. And that word bowed us down to the floor. Great sorrow fell upon us. Because the offense we had done, we, we are now awakened to the offense to the Most High Yah. And we receive the gift. And here we are even today because we have received, because we trusted. We trusted after we heard the word of truth. It was the gospel of our salvation. And then after that, in whom else, also after that, ye believed. <laughs> the word. <laughs> you know, the word comes to a lot of people, but they, you know, they don't, they, they, they don't have that realm of trust. No, they don't have that ability to believe. That's been given to us, saints. That's been given to us before the foundation of the world. This was purpose. This was purpose. This was, you know, predestined. This was already in play before the foundation of the world. Why kick? Like he said, why? Pro Paul, why are you kicking against the prince? This is the reason. That you're in this state now, I have purposed you to the nations. Come on, vessel, get off your butt. Saul became Paul, huh? Amazing thing that he used there. What a vehicle. Turn a vehicle that was out killing the people of Yah. Turn it around, you know, and, and use the same vehicle to gather the people of Yah. And word of truth came to Saul. Why? Why are you persecuting me, Saul? 
Why? Why? All these instances, St Stefan and everything, the pricks, the pricks. Didn't you feel? Didn't you notice me poking your conscience? Didn't you? Didn't you notice me telling you that you're a chosen vessel? I'd go to this manner, this extreme, to this point, to blinding you for three days so that you could see? Life changing. This most Yah Yah knows how to do it. And he knows how to do it very, very, extremely well with surgical precision. It's amazing here. In whom ye also trusted after that you heard the word of truth. You know, if we didn't hear this word of truth, where would the trust come? You know, we received the word. And the word, it flourished in us, it burst something in us, it woke us up. It brought us to a realm of trust. If it wasn't for that realm of trust, I don't think I would be on my knees giving myself to someone I have never seen in my whole life. How he would manifest himself to me in such a vivid way beyond my natural sight. That, you know, that, that my very core of my being would see him for who he is, and then in seeing him for who he is would show me who he saw in me. And I received the reflection. And I saw a horde creature. I saw uh, someone who was a putrefying sore, someone diseased, someone with limbs falling off. I saw someone that was given over to death. But I saw one, someone standing beside me who was reaching out his hand saying, I am life. Grab my hand. Because even at my lowest state of repentance, that hand was reaching down to me and I was able to trust to reach up and grab that hand and been pulled out of that mire and out of that fire. And I am thankful to this day. Yeah, I thought I was something on that damn stage. Bang your head. Look, everybody's looking at you. You know, the girls are going at you. Look, you're almost like a musical god. To hell with that life. That life was killing me. I was on the highway to hell. I was on the highway to hell. And I was hearing hell's bell. And I was loving it. My flesh was just, oh, I can see my flesh. It had gallons and buckets and barrels of all kinds of sin, iniquity, and transgression. And it was swimming in it, and it was diving in, it was baptizing itself in it. It was living the, it was living the death. Till the sun said, ah, this is not what I purposed you for, but hey, you, you got to go through that. It was purposed that you must go this way. And every one of us has our testimony in so many facets. How the Most High I reached down to us and how we trusted in Him. Many of us would never know. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom after also after that ye believed, ye were sealed, ye were sealed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which 
is the earnest of our inheritance. It's just a little payment. It's just a little taste of the inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. We've been purchased. And we are redeemed day by day unto the praise of His glory. First Peter, <laughs> praise God. Let's see. I've still got my hand in Hebrews because I guess we're still. Uh, Still in verse 4 of Hebrews, but we're going now to First uh, Peter 1, I think, if I can get there. First Peter, First Peter, First Peter 1. 1 through 4. Peter here saying, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect. What? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered through Pontus. Notice that word, strangers. They were scattered through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect. According to the foreknowledge of Yah, the Father, through sanctification of the setting apart of the Spirit, that's how they were made elect, and unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Say, grace unto you and peace always be multiplied. That's why I say shalom, shalom, shalom. I say a lot of people, shalom, shalom. I'm multiplying peace. Shalom, shalom. Said, Blessed be the Elohim and Father of our Master, our Savior Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again. Gotten us again into a lively. Notice that word lively. Not a deadly, but a lively hope. A passionate hope. An exhilarating hope. A quickening hope. How? How has he begotten us again unto this hope? It said, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What to an inheritance? To, to, to an inheritance. And his inheritance is incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, and it says it's, a, it's only in one place, and when Yeshua comes back, he's bringing it with him, reserved in heaven for you. Beautiful words there, saints, beautiful words. I'm going to break away here just for a little bit. I'm going to hear a little few words from... Uh, our dear sister, Sister Wenda, she does the ministry break here, gives you the uh, the info of the ministry, and then we're going to come and come back and hear a little word from uh, Numana Foods. Numana Foods, all right? Praise you. I shall return shortly.
Well, all right, that was short-lived. I don't know what's going on. This uh, blog talk radio will not play. The radio m- ministry break it won't play nothing. It'll sit there, and I will invoke it, and just sit there and spin, and then cuts off. All right. Anybody hearing Sister... Anybody out there hearing Sister Winda? It says it's showing that it's playing, but I... No, okay. All right. We'll just continue on. I don't know why this thing is doing what it's doing. Oh, boy. Praise y'all. Saints of the Most High, I let us continue on. I think I'm going one more place with... Uh, this thought on inheritance, Colossians 3.24. Let me get there. We'll start at verse 23. Talking about this inheritance, talking about being the image of our... Now, we've been talking about a lot of things this Sabbath. But it's all good. All, we're all talking about one person. Yes. Talking about our Savior. It says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Master, and not unto men. Knowing that of the Master... Ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Why? For ye serve the Savior, Jesus. Ye serve Christ. Praise Yah. Praise Yah for that. Oh, hallelujah. Let me see where we're at in time. Saints of the Most High, I didn't look. Oh, man, I didn't know I was going on that long. Well, here we are, and we made it to verse 4 of Hebrews. Again, I'm sitting here drenched in sweat. Woo! Hot and dieted and in a good matter. I don't know what's going on with this. One of these to play. Let me see. Yeah, I tried it one more time. Nothing ain't happened. Okay. Well, saints of the Most High, I bless you all and thank you all this evening. We'll go no farther in this, I guess. When we return again, we will start with uh, verse 5. And we'll continue on. I thank you for the ability again to minister. and glad that I can fellowship with my family, my brothers and sisters here. We can break bread. We can le- learn and understand what Yeshua has done for us. This is the core of our being as being Hebrews. And I'm very thankful to be in this book at this time. Thank you, Brother Ugly, again. Brother Paul, for posting scriptures, for being there. Hallelujah. Still, still the Shabbat here. I bless you all. Praise you all. In Yeshua's name. The praise, you know, is always going to Him. And I am thankful for our Master. This may we continue on and have a fruitful week, saints of the Most High Yah. I've been supercharged this, this Shabbat. I'm ready for another six days of labor and work, knowing that I'm doing it unto Him. And I bless you all for that. I will bless you all. Love you all. King is coming. Oh, hallelujah. Praise Yah. Uh-oh. Look at